welcome to Rick's Scale Model Fix and it's kit review time. This time we're going to be looking at Airfix's brand new 148 scale de Havilland Vampire F3. Starting with the box top tour as always, there's some fantastic digital artwork there from uh, I believe Adam Tooby. Three marking options indicated on the kit. Flipping the box over we've got some dimensions so it's 195mm long, 250mm wide and a parts count of 124 which makes it skill level 2 with two flying hours. We've got three schemes in the box so it's 601 Squadron Royal Air Force 1952 number 442 City of Vancouver Squadron Canadian Air Force 1949 and the Norwegian Air Force example in the museum from 2019. Flipping to the other side we've got the multilingual warning data contact details for Hornby and a little badge there claiming that the decals are from Cartograph. So without further ado let's lift the lid, dive into the plastic and take a look inside. So diving into the uh, literature including with the kit and the paperwork so we've got those lovely decals printed by Cartograph. Airfix again have gone down the route of providing instrumentation in decal format which is not particularly brilliant. I'm not a great fan of it unless the decals are really really good so we're instantly I think we're going to be probably looking at some form of added instrumentation cockpit details obviously from the likes of Eddard no doubt maybe Quinta Studios who knows Full set of stencil data, markings for three aircraft, the rest of the uh, imagery looking perfect. So we've got some folded up sheets. So we've got uh, three marking options. So this is Canadian Air Force One. So it's quite striking silver and red. Would have been nice perhaps for Airfix if they haven't done so in the instruction but to provide a template or a mask for the uh, nose section, we'll have a look, see if they've included in that. A lot of manufacturers these days are doing things like that. On the other side, we've got uh, again another silver machine. This time it's the Royal Air Force uh, 601 Royal Auxiliary Air Force markings. That look quite attractive, and that's on the box art as well. So we've got another sheet of markings again, just one sided this time. And this is for the museum example in Norway, 2019. So taking a look at the instruction booklet, this is going to be our first indication of what the build is going to be like. So we've got the usual bump on the front, just explaining a little bit about the type and its operational history. Turning the page, we've got the icons and what they mean that we all love to read and fully understand. And then it's into construction. So strangely for this one we're not looking at the cockpit construction first and we've got to make a decision really early on as to whether we have the model in flight or not. And we need to drill out some holes if we're using the drop tanks. Then we turn into the bifurcated intakes and some structural detail for the inside of the airframe that's then going on to make up quite a well detailed wheel bay and internal assembly by the looks of things. Turning over we've still got some more detail to add to complete those main gear bays. Jet pipe, another bulkhead and wing spar that's going to keep everything in place with the rear end and the jet exhaust can there. And then it's not up until stage 14 where we see the cockpit construction begin. And again another option, we've got a seat there with moulded harnesses or without, depending on whether you want to add the pilot figure. Bit of detail, fire extinguisher or oxygen bottle, can't really tell, and it's not colour coded. Going on to the rear bulkhead, cockpit flow with the seat that we've already chosen being brought together with a nice little diagram showing you the correct angles. Pilot figure looks to be reasonably rendered, we'll have a look at that on the sprues later. Instrument side panels and control column going in. And then it's on to uh, working again on this lower fuselage section. And we're getting the nose gear walls built up. 
and the roof and then it's looking as though this cockpit tub slides in and clicks into place with the final nose gear bay roof completing that assembly. It'll be interesting to see how that all goes together. Stage 23, a little bit more detail going in before we bring the booms to the fuselage. It's nice to see that they really do have some positive uh, in location sort of sockets and pins as that's going to be really important and uh, always a weakness in vampire kits. Turns our attention to the inside of the upper surface of the cockpit and the aperture side of the side walls etc adding a bit more detail and then we've got that instrument panel. So we've got two instrument panels so we've got to decide on which one we're using for the examples that we're building. Again, exploded view showing where everything goes in before we bring the wings and the uh, two fuselage sections together and it looks like they overlap around the, the tail boom sections there as well so that's going to be a really positive fit. Part 33 sees the intakes which look as though they have the moulded veins in place which will save some fiddly alignment problems being uh, circumvented there. 17 grams of nose weight in the separate nose cone, tail and rudders, elevator and, uh, elevators going in. So we can, just having a quick read of the instructions there, we've got poseable flaps so we can build those in the up or down position which is nice and that goes on to show you the options for each uh, position there through the instruction book. Just make sure that you're following the correct ones, we've got things like little uh, air bottles, compressed air bottles and hinges and everything going in there. So that's going to add a lot to the model, that's going to look quite nice when it's built up. Straight into the undercarriage certainly can be added after construction so no fancy jigs like in the Mosquito if you've watched that build straightforward enough wheels got flat spots two halves going on to the axles make sure they're in the right position before attention turns to the nose gear and that looks pretty straightforward as well just follow the instructions carefully to make sure you're getting everything in the right place drop tanks going on separate wing tips, ailerons, bringing the conclusion of the build on page 80, uh, sorry step 80, uh, the mass weights, a little bit more cockpit detail and the pitot tubes for the tail, separate lenses for the lights and wing tip lights, gun sight, cockpit, can be posed open or closed. So all in all that looks to be a really quite detailed build, certainly better than the Sabre that I built uh, a few months back. I uh, just hope those plastic parts exhibit the detail that we can see there in the instruction book when we uh, look at the cockpit because that was a real weak area for me in the Sabre. So there's four plastic sprues in the kit and one clear for the canopy and lights and lenses. This is frame A or sprue A and this accommodates the lower wing and fuselage section. It's really nice I think that Airfix have done it in this manner because it's going to avoid a whole host of alignment issues that you could get if that was a separate fuselage pod and wings. Looking at the tooling, uh, there are rivets, very fine, on the edges of the panel lines. Moulding looks to be fantastic in that familiar blue grey plastic but it does feel slightly different. Maybe a bit harder, not as soft. Blind side, got the locating holes and the ejector pin marks there but nothing that I can see would cause a modeler any problems and needing to clean up. Just perhaps just make sure some of these raised circles don't interfere with the fit of the parts. So sprue B contains the upper surface. Again, no visible sink marks. No rivet detail on this one, which is surprising considering the lower wings had it. We've got that split intake. Nice to see that there is actually no ejector pin marks in there. Well done Airfix. Bit of detail on those bulkheads and spars, you could actually drill those out depending on what's visible in those undercarriage bays or you could just put a black wash in. Internally we've got some detail 
for the roof of the main gear bay there, just here, and the flaps, recesses, nothing much really going on in the cockpit, and there's Airfix's circular location tab arrangement that they favour. This is Spruce C. So we've got a lot of the smaller parts for the main gear and the undercarriage in that pilot figure, a bit of cockpit detail as well. So again, some nice looking detail there, certainly on some of these under carriage bay panels. Again, perhaps be worth drilling those out. Pilot figure, it is what it is, not too bad. Blind side, nothing really notable. Nice clean tooling, no flash and no visible sink marks at this time. So this is the final grey sprue in the kit, sprue D. So we've got that seat with the harnesses and without got the nose gear, nose cone there, drop tanks. And there's three types of intake, so there's definitely further marks, probably an FB5 I would imagine, coming. It's nice to see that they've got the veins moulded in situ there. Could make external painting and clean up of the slight mould line in there a little bit treacherous. Got some uh, ejector pins on the back so you're going to have to watch your fitter there. These instrument panels do feature some raised bezels. They're not awe inspiring I'm afraid. You, you know you're going to need to do something with those but it also depends on what's actually yeah, visible in the kit. And being the vintage aircraft that it is, the cockpits were basic anyway. Final plastic parts in the kit are the clear canopy sections. I'm not going to get these out of the bag because I've got no immediate plans to bring this to you as a video build. I'm just going to wait until we get some aftermarket for that cockpit. I think it's uh, I think it's needed, and I don't want to be diving in like I did with the Saber, um, having something that looks quite basic when viewed through that open cockpit glass. But they look well moulded. There's no issues with those whatsoever. So there we have Airfix's brand new 148 scale de Havilland Vampire F3. Overall it looks to be a massive improvement on anything that we've had kitted of the Vampire to date. Accuracy wise I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay, unlike the Trumpeter one. And it's going to certainly be a lot easier to build than the resin or vac form kits from a while back from Aero Club and a Alley Cat. I think have also done that in a mixed media sort of format. So your kit number for this one is A06107. Comes highly recommended from what I've seen in the box. I'm sure the build and some of the engineering around that twin boom system is going to make sure everything lines up perfectly. So until next time everybody please look after yourselves, stay well and take care.